Today, Turkey is known as one of the most popular resorts. But besides that, its lands are considered the cradle of many ancient civilizations. In this video, I invite you to get acquainted with the most amazing and shocking findings of archaeologists in Turkey. Enjoy watching! In 2007, archaeologists made a sensational discovery in the Gediz River Valley. They found one of the oldest tools ever discovered in Turkey. For a long time, scientists could not determine its exact age. However, thanks to modern radiometric dating methods, it was found that the tool was made about 1.2 million years ago. The tool was found in Anatolia. In ancient times, this place was a so-called corridor through which early hominins could migrate to Europe. The discovery in the Gediz Valley allowed scientists to determine one of the earliest routes and times of possible migration of primitive people from Africa to Asia and Europe. In addition, this discovery is evidence of the earliest human settlements in these lands. Nothing of such age had been found in Anatolia before, so the stone tool represents incredible value for archaeology. During excavations in the ancient city of Blondus in 2021, archaeologists discovered 400 tombs carved into the rocks and interconnected. Blondus had two different types of necropolises. One consisted of several mounds to the north of the city, and the other to the south contained many rock-cut tombs. The rock-cut tombs form a complex of rooms, with the main part consisting of chambers with sarcophagi carved inside the rock. According to scientists, the other spaces were likely used for burial rituals. The main entrance to the complex was through a marble door. Inside, the walls were covered with white plaster, which was decorated with various patterns. Scientists state that the complex was used in the second century AD by ancient Romans. Currently, scientists are engaged in preserving and further studying these unique tombs. In 2022, during excavations in the ancient city of Pergamon, archaeologists discovered a tomb. According to an inscription carved on an andesite block, it was the resting place of an ancient oracle named Marcus. Marcus lived in Pergamon in the 2nd century AD. In the city, he was known as the priest of the Bird Oracle, predicting the future. Marcus's prophecies were based on the behavior of birds. He studied their flights and the sounds they made. Scientists believe that the practice of future prediction by observing birds originated in the Hittite culture. Later, this practice was mentioned in the works of ancient Greek poets, such as Homer and Hesiod. In Marcus's tomb, archaeologists discovered valuable artifacts, a perfume flask, a plate, a candle, and body cleaning tools. However, they believe that the tomb was looted before its discovery by researchers, and many valuables were stolen from it. Marcus's name had already been encountered by archaeologists in Pergamon, for example, on an altar in the temple complex of Asclepian. This led to the conclusion that the oracle was a respected and revered person in the city. Therefore, the discovery of his tomb was a significant event for archaeologists. Perhaps one of the most popular attractions in Istanbul is the Basilica Cistern. This is the first place tourists often visit. The Basilica Cistern is one of 40 ancient water reservoirs in Istanbul, but none of them can boast such colossal size. The length of the cistern is 140 meters, and its width is 70 meters. It can hold about 80 cubic meters of water. Inside, the cistern resembles a huge hall. Its vaults are supported by three 36 columns arranged in 12 rows. The most famous among them is the Weeping Column, which, unlike all the others, always remains wet. However, the most amazing thing inside the cistern is the upside-down head of Medusa. In fact, there are two inside the reservoir, but the one turned 180 degrees is more famous, while the other is turned 90 degrees. The purpose of these stone blocks and why they are inverted remains a mystery. Some believe that the blocks actually served as the tomb of Medusa. According to legend, Medusa was a beautiful girl with long hair, but after she was raped by Poseidon, she was turned into a monster with snakes for hair by Athena. 
Anyone who looked at her turned to stone. Perhaps the blocks in the basilica cistern were inverted to prevent anyone from turning to stone. As is known, Christianity originated in the first century AD. However, at that time, no church buildings existed. Later, during mass persecutions, Christians secretly gathered in caves. One such cave, located in the Turkish city of Antakya, is considered the oldest Christian church. The modern city of Antakya used to be a real metropolis of ancient times. Antioch, recognized as the cradle of Christianity. Even in the Bible, in the Acts of the Apostles, there is a mention of Antioch. St. Peter's Church is located in a cave in Mount Starius at a depth of 13 meters. Its width is 9 meters, and its height is 7 meters. The oldest man-made parts of the church, including remnants of frescoes and floor mosaics, date back to the 4th century AD. However, historians assume that Apostle Peter himself preached within its walls. That's why the church got his name. The Crusaders who came to these lands in the 11th century also knew about this place. They continued to improve the church. Interestingly, one of the leaders of the First Crusade, Tancred of Taranto, was buried in its walls. Now St. Peter's Church serves as a museum open to visitors. In 2021, workers accidentally discovered the ruins of an ancient structure while building a house in the Turkish province of Hatay. All construction work was halted and archaeologists arrived at the site. Research revealed that the ruins were once a Roman villa with floors decorated with geometric mosaic patterns. Scientists estimate that the structure was built about 1,500 years ago. This discovery was accidental, but archaeologists had previously found Roman villas in the province of Hatay. During the Roman Empire, the area of modern-day Hatay was home to the city of Antioch. Today, the Turkish city of Antakya stands in its place. Antioch was founded by Seleucus I Nicator, a general of Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC. This city was one of the largest and most important cities of the Byzantine and Roman empires. For archaeologists, this land has become a true treasure trove of ancient artifacts. Hundreds of Roman mosaics have been found in Hate, some of which are kept in art museums around the world. At first glance, the St. Stephen Church in Istanbul looks no different from other stone Orthodox churches. However, it is actually made of prefabricated cast iron elements. That's why it's called the Iron Church. The St. Stephen Church was built in the mid 19th century at the request of the Bulgarian population of Istanbul. At that time, there was a serious conflict between the Greeks and Bulgarians over religious issues. For this reason, Sultan Abdulaziz fulfilled the request and ordered the construction of a wooden church on the banks of the Golden Horn. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the wooden church burned down, and soon after, the iron church was erected in its place. The project for this unusual structure was designed by the Armenian architect Ovsep Aznavour. Thousands of cast iron elements were manufactured for the project, with a total weight exceeding 500 tons. Cast iron was chosen for the construction of the church for a reason. This decision was dictated by the nature of the soil at the site. A stone or brick structure could eventually sink into the ground. However, the church also soon encountered problems with cast iron. Proximity to the sea negatively affected the metal church, and it soon began to rust. In 2018, the St. Stephen Church was restored and reopened its doors to parishioners. In March 2023, during extensive excavations in the territory of the Arslantepe Mound, archaeologists discovered nine ancient swords. However, what surprised the scientists was not so much the discovery itself, but its age. After studying the swords, it turned out that they were made more than 5,000 years ago. This means they are the oldest swords ever found in the world. The weapons were made from a copper alloy containing arsenic. Three of them, were inlaid with silver. The length of the shortest sword is 45 centimeters and the longest is 60 centimeters. The ancient weapons are almost indistinguishable from modern equivalents. The swords have a typical blade shape, 
handle, and guard. In the necropolis, besides weapons, other forged items were also found. It's hard to believe that people made such a huge breakthrough in metallurgy 5,000 years ago, but this discovery speaks for itself. In the central part of Turkey, in Konya province, a large sinkhole recently formed. Its diameter is about 40 meters and its depth reaches 15 meters. The exact causes of the sinkhole's appearance are still unknown. Initially, it was believed that the pit formed after an earthquake. However, after interviewing local residents, it turned out that the sinkhole had formed even before the earthquake began. People in Kanya province are accustomed to such natural phenomena, but after more and more sinkholes kept appearing, they raised the alarm. Currently, there are about 600 sinkholes in the province, all of varying diameters, from a couple to several tens of meters. However, even the smallest of them are gradually increasing in size. The appearance of sinkholes poses a threat to the agricultural lands of local residents. There have been cases where entire fields and farms have sunk underground. To date, scientists have proposed about 30 different hypotheses for this phenomenon. According to one of them, sinkholes occur as a result of carbon dioxide combining with underground water. When this happens, the lower layer of soil begins to deteriorate, forming a cave. Over time, the soil above it collapses. Another theory suggests that the farmers themselves are to blame for this problem. The lack of full-bodied rivers and weak precipitation force people to use underground sources for irrigating agricultural plots. As they dry up, caves also form underground, and the soil above them gradually begins to collapse. The most dangerous aspect of sinkholes is that they all appear suddenly, and anyone can find themselves at their epicenter. In 2020, Turkish archaeologists began large-scale excavations in the vicinity of the city of Midyat. Near one of the houses, researchers discovered a cave. Upon inspection, it became clear that the cave was the entrance to a network of underground tunnels connected to each other. Midyat is a very ancient city, known since the 9th century BCE. For a long time, it remained an Assyrian city except for a few conquests. From 150 to 250 BCE, Midyat was part of the Kingdom of Edessa. At that time, Christianity rapidly spread in Western Asia, and Midyat became a city of the Syro-Persian Christian Church. The city's name translates from Assyrian as City of Caves. Historians believe that the caves were built during the founding of Midyat, but became inhabited only during the Roman persecution of Christians, about 1900 years ago. During the excavations, ritual altars, water wells, and storage rooms were discovered in the caves. In addition, archaeologists found a large number of artifacts dating back to the 2nd and 3rd centuries CE. Underground cities such as Derinkuyu and Nevsehir had already been discovered in Turkey. However, Midyat was different in that people lived in this city continuously for over 1,000 years. Scientists have yet to learn why people continued to use the underground part of the city after the times of Roman persecution. One of the most valuable plants among the ancient Romans was Silphium. This plant with yellow flowers was considered a real panacea. The ancient Romans, Greeks, and Egyptians obtained a gum resin from Silphium, which helped them cure digestive disorders, sore throats, and high temperatures. In addition, Silphium was used as a contraceptive and a food additive. This ancient plant disappeared more than 2,000 years ago. But recently, a medicinal plant researcher, Mamut Miski, announced that near Mount Hassan in central Turkey, he discovered Silphium. But how could this plant get to Turkey? Scientists explain this by the fact that ancient Greek colonies were located near Mount Hassan. Mamut Miski was amazed by his discovery. During the study of Silphium, it turned out that it indeed has many useful and healing properties. Most astonishingly, silphium contains substances capable of destroying cancer cells. This discovery was sensational. Now scientists continue to study the plant in order to develop an effective medicine for cancer patients in the near future. Usually in populated areas, 
cemeteries are located in specially designated areas. However, it turns out that there is a city in Turkey where you can find a grave in the middle of the street. Yeni Mahale Hamzaoglu is one of the bustling streets of the city of Sivas. It is here at an intersection that someone's tombstone is located. The grave appeared only a few years ago. The tombstone bears the inscription, Martyr Garaban Baba. But why would someone want to bury a relative in the middle of the street? In reality, no one did, and the story behind the grave is quite different. The city's mayor explained that the tombstone appeared here after repair work. Previously, it was located on the territory of someone's house. The house was demolished, and when workers began laying asphalt, they decided not to carry out a reburial. Local residents believe that the grave belongs to a holy person, so they often bring flowers to this site. Izanoi is an ancient Greek polis in western Anatolia. This place is a real treasure trove of archaeological discoveries. One of the most valuable finds is the well-preserved Temple of Zeus. Excavations in Izanoi began as early as 1926 and continue to this day. One of the latest discoveries for archaeologists was two workshops found in the territory of the Agora. In one of them, archaeologists managed to find thousands of bones, most of which were unprocessed. This indicated that they were materials for further processing. In the second workshop, a large number of fragments of oil lamps were found, indicating it was a workshop for their production. These finds have allowed scientists to learn more about the trade and social life of the ancient Greek police. In 2022, this photo spread across the internet. It shows an elderly man holding a picture of a desert. If you look closely, the terrain in the picture and behind the man coincide. Previously, the Bozabat region was indeed a desert, and all this forest appeared thanks to the efforts of Hikmet Kaya, who was captured in the photo. In 1978, he became the head of the department at the Forestry Administration. Then he decided to turn the barren lands of Bozabat into a green oasis. At his initiative, 30 million trees were planted in this region. Hikmet not only monitored the planting, but also personally participated in it. In 2002, the man retired but did not stop doing what he loved. In Turkey, he became a very respected person. He is often invited to television, where he talks about his activities. Thanks to his efforts and love for his work, the residents of Bozabat now happily relax in the shady forest, and the once dried lands have become a cozy home for animals and birds. Hikmet Kaya proved to the whole world that good intentions and hard work bear fruit. In ancient times, doctors did not have an abundance of tools for surgery. However, this did not prevent them from performing a procedure such as trepanation. During this surgical intervention, a hole was made in the skull of a living person through drilling, cutting, or scraping. Trepanation has been known since ancient times, with trepanned skulls found in Europe, America, Africa, and China. The earliest evidence of skull opening surgery dates back to the 5th millennium BC. This procedure was considered a remedy for various diseases, including severe headaches resulting from injuries. Despite the complexity of trepanation in ancient conditions, many people managed to survive it. Scientists believe that such surgical intervention could also have been performed for religious rituals. This is indicated by the fact that in some excavation sites, dozens of trepanned skulls were found without any signs of mechanical injuries. However, direct evidence of ritual trepanation is currently lacking. More than 300 trepanned skulls have been found in Turkey. The oldest of these is 3,200 years old and was discovered in the province of Van in the autumn of 2022. In 2017, an unusual incident occurred in the Turkish village of Bazbuk. Looters learned that valuable artifacts might be stored in the basement of one of the houses. However, the police managed to stop them. In the house's basement, archaeologists discovered a large underground ritual complex. According to scientists, the complex dates back to the Neo-Assyrian era, or the 9th century BCE. 
Inside, there are upper and lower galleries and an entrance chamber. Researchers found images of four gods on the wall panel. The storm, rain, and thunder god Hadad, his spouse Atargatis, the goddess of fertility, the moon god Sin, and the sun god Shamash. This led scientists to speculate that the underground space served as a place for regional fertility cults. The discovery of the ritual complex helped historians learn more about the Neo-Assyrian culture and the customs of this people. The Aksaray Museum is known for its rich collection of mummies, including those of infants and even cats. All were discovered in Aksaray and date back to the 10th, 11th, and 12th centuries AD. The museum's director, Yusuf Alton, is happy to talk about each exhibit stored in the museum. According to him, the Aksaray Museum is the only one in Turkey where such a large number of mummies can be seen. The embalming technique in Turkey differed from that used in Egypt. Mummification occurred after the removal of the deceased's internal organs. The body was then covered in melted wax, cloth, and a shroud. In this state, the deceased was buried in the ground, where the mummification process continued. The mummified cat is the most astonishing exhibit, eliciting admiration from museum visitors. According to Yusuf, the cat's owner loved it so much that he decided to spend a significant amount of money on its mummification. 1800 years ago, in the ancient city of Mastara, thousands of people gathered to watch gladiator fights. At that time, there was a large amphitheater in this place, but scientists were unaware of its existence. Only in 2022, during excavations in the modern Turkish province of Aden, archaeologists discovered its ruins. Historians believe that the arena was built during the reign of the Phoenician dynasty of the Severans, that is, about 1800 years ago. It had a circular shape, partly resembling the legendary Colosseum. The capacity of the arena was 20,000 people. All this time, the building was hidden in sand and vegetation, so no one could discover it. For this reason, the amphitheater was in excellent condition. In the above-ground parts of the building, the seats, supporting walls, and the arena itself, where gladiator battles took place, have been preserved. According to Turkish archaeologist Sadat Akarnaz, this find is unique, as nothing like it has been discovered in Anatolia before. On the outskirts of the city of Samandag lies a marvel of ancient engineering, the Vespasian Titus Tunnel, with a total length of about one and a half kilometers. 2,000 years ago, this site was home to the large port city of Seleucia Pieria. Periodically, water from the mountains flowed into the city, passing through its center. During the thaw, Pieria was partially flooded. This problem had to be addressed, so in the first century AD, Emperor Vespasian of the Flavian dynasty decided to change the river's course. For this purpose, a dam and a channel were designed to pass through two artificial tunnels dug in the rocks. Construction took a long time, and after Vespasian's death, his son Titus began to oversee the work. The tunnel only started functioning in the second century, during the reign of Antoninus Pius. At the entrance to the first section of the tunnel, the names of the two emperors who oversaw this grand construction are carved, Vespasian and Titus. At the entrance to the discharge tunnel, one can find the name of the ruler Antoninus, under whom the work was completed. The Vespasian Titus Tunnel provided the residents of Pieria with clean water and protected them from floods. According to UNESCO, it is recognized as one of the unique structures built to solve urban problems. The tunnel has been well preserved to this day and is open for tourists to visit. The ancient city of Assos is known for its mysterious anomaly. In the necropolis of this city, there were sarcophagi capable of rapidly decomposing the bodies of the deceased. On average, this process takes 50 years, but in these sarcophagi it happened in just 40 days. For this reason, they were named sarcophagos, which literally translates from ancient Greek as flesh-eating. It is from this interpretation that the word sarcophagus originated. Assos was founded in 900 BC by Aeolian colonists. In this city, on the top of a cliff, the Temple of Athena was built, 
from which Hermias ruled the region. At that time, the city was famous for its wealth and prosperity. The first sarcophagi began to appear in Assos in the 5th century BC. They were made of andesite stone and looked very simple. In Roman times, various images, patterns, and inscriptions began to appear on the sarcophagi. These stone coffins quickly gained popularity. In Assos, they were made to order for Romans and Egyptians. Unfortunately, scientists still cannot determine which properties of this stone caused the deceased's body to decompose at such a speed. Therefore, the mystery of the Assos sarcophagi remains unsolved. Turkey is a real treasure trove for archaeologists. The latest discoveries indicate that humans first set foot on this land more than a million years ago. However, due to the vast number of different civilizations that have existed in this area, the more ancient ones remain unknown. Recently, archaeologists discovered strange stone dwellings, such as those shown in this photograph. Surprisingly, they are scattered across many parts of Turkey. This alarms scientists as it suggests that these people lived in small groups at great distances from each other. Scientists are now trying to determine who these dwellings belong to, and perhaps soon, we will learn about a new civilization of people that has remained unknown until today. And that's all from me. If you liked this video, don't forget to rate it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell. Your activity is the best reward for me. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.